an orchestra adventure with maestro Carl and friends. Playful percussion. Imagine, if you will, a phenomenon that surrounds us everywhere we go. The phenomenon of music. How is it that organizing sounds in certain ways makes us feel so strongly? At the end of the day, what makes music so powerful remains a mystery. Music is constantly around us, even if we don't notice it. Welcome everyone, so glad you could join us. Today, we're going to go on the final leg of our journey. We're going to learn all about percussion. Percussion instruments are those that produce sound when struck with hands, sticks, or mallets. You can shake them, rattle them, scrape them, bang them together. Percussion instruments were the first instruments ever invented by humans other than the human voice, of course. It's 6 a.m. No Verdi until the afternoon. I'm gonna call my friend Josh Jones, principal percussionist of the Calgary Phil. He's an absolute percussion master. Hello? Hey Josh, it's Carl. You sound like you're out in a boot. Hey Carl, yeah, I'm just walking by the river. What do you need? I was hoping you could tell us all about the world of percussion. Yeah, percussion is anything. Literally anything you see in the world is a percussion instrument. My body, my hands, my feet, literally anything. Now, I heard a rumor that there are a ton of percussion instruments and that you have to be proficient on all of them? That's right, let's take a look at some of them. Snare drum. Triangle. Bass drum. Tambourine. Cymbals. Guiro. This is a cajon. Wow, you just gave us a whole tour of Calgary along with all of those percussion instruments. Now, most of those instruments only produce one general pitch, but what about the family of percussion instruments that can play lots of different notes? Yeah, on these instruments, we can play so many different colors and sounds and different notes. This instrument is my favorite called a vibraphone and I love it because it has a motor that can vibrate the sound. Amazing. Josh, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed by just how many percussion instruments there are. Yeah, me too. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Bye, Carl. There are almost too many percussion instruments to count, but there's a special set of drums that's usually the responsibility of just one musician in the orchestra. Take a look at this. are the timpani, and they've been part of symphonic writing longer than any other percussion instrument. I'm gonna see if principal timpanist Alex Cohen is available for a quick chat. Hello? Hello. 
This is a prepaid collect call from Maestro Carl. Would you like to accept the charges? Uh, yes, I'll accept the charges. Alex, hey, thanks. Uh, I've just been so busy exploring the orchestra with my friends here that I just forgot to pay my phone bill. That's okay, Carl. I'm used to bailing you out on the stage all the time. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, <clears throat> what can you tell us about your instrument? These big drums that you often see on stage with the symphony orchestra are called timpani. They became a standard part of the orchestra during the Baroque and Classical eras as a kind of reinforcement for the harmony and rhythm of a musical phrase when the composer really wanted to get their point across. So how did the role of the timpani change as time went on? In the Romantic era and afterwards going into the 20th century, composers began using the timpani in a more varied way allowing it to take on a wider range of colors and characters. We have pedals, or in this case, a chain, that loosens and tightens the drum head. That is, the part of the drum that I strike here at the top. We often have to change pitch while music is being played around us, so we timpanists have to listen very carefully and adjust the pitch accordingly. Looks like being a timpanist requires some extreme focus. Thanks, Alex. No worries. See you later. hearing to imagine sounds or music inside our heads. And I have to say, conductors especially have to make good use of our inner ears. When we're looking at a piece of music, we have to be able to read the notes and imagine in our heads how the music sounds. What else do conductors do? What's with all that arm flailing anyways? <sighs> if only I could remember what music director Runa Bergman told me that one time. It's me! Carl, don't worry. I'm here to help you. The conductor stands in front of the orchestra and leads the rehearsals and performances. You collaborate with all the musicians to shape how the music takes form. We use our facial expressions and body language to express the emotions and the character of the music. The conductor also gets to decide on the tempo. This is how fast or how slow a piece will be played. The right hand keeps the beat, while the left hand shows the expressive qualities of the music. Let's all learn how to conduct in common time, meaning there are four beats. So if you take your right arm like this, and we go down, left, right, up, down, left, right, up. Let's do it together. Ready? Here we go. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There you go. I think you're all on your way to becoming fantastic conductors. Call, that should help you remember the basics. Basics, 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 basics. basics. Tisha? Is that you? I've been hearing someone playing the harp off screen all episode. Hey, Carl. Yes, it's me. I knew you would forget about the harp, so I've just been providing a gentle reminder whenever the opportunity presented itself. The harp is a bit of a rogue instrument within the orchestra, isn't it? I mean that it's made up of strings, but it's not really like the other string instruments. Where does it fit into the grand scheme of things? You're right. The harp is in a whole special class of its own, and composers usually use it as a special, beautiful, angelic, heavenly entity. There are 47 strings on the harp, and they are tuned like the white keys on the piano. 
And there are paddles at the bottom, which make the sharps and flats, like the pitches of the black keys on the piano. Gee whiz, Tisha! Does that mean you have to tune each individual string? Oh, you bet. And you know what they say about harpists? They spend half their time tuning, and the other half playing out of tune. Sounds like a challenge, but no need to harp on about it. Tisha Mervahill, everyone, principal harpist of the Calgary Philharmonic. Well, here we are. We've covered some serious ground on our exploration of the instruments that play in a symphony orchestra. There sure are a lot of them. Let's check in quickly with Weather Maestro Carlo to see how they all sit together on stage. Over to you, Weather Maestro. Thanks, Carl. Well, everyone, as you can see, the temperature inside the concert hall today is slightly below room temperature. Why is it always so cold during rehearsals? No one knows! Today's forecast calls for a symphony by Johannes Brahms, so let's take a look at how the musicians will be seated on stage. As you can see in the front here, we've got the entire string section. First violins, second violins, violas, cellos, and of course, the double basses. In the middle, we've got the woodwind section, and behind them, we've got all the brass players lined up against the back wall there. This particular symphony only calls for two percussionists playing the timpani and the triangle, so we've situated that unit right here. On the weekend, we're looking at a 50% chance of Wagner overtures. So as you can see, we've called for reinforcements in the brass section, added as many percussionists as possible, and moved the cello section into the choir loft for bad behavior. Back to you, Carl. Thanks, Carlo. Looking good over there. Well, everyone, I think that brings us to the end of our orchestra adventure. I've learned so much about music and instruments and composers. I just want to say thanks so much for coming along on this journey with me. Who knows where we'll go on our next musical adventure.